All right, so I have tried it all. I've tried reading, rereading, color coding, highlighting, and literally doing everything in the books to memorize endless pieces of information for an exam or a test that was coming up. And let me tell you, like all of those failed, but in the end, I finally found a way that actually worked and it's called active recall. So active recall is basically stimulating your brain in a conscious way to remember key pieces of information that sounds pretty tempting, right? So if you're someone who's new here, hi, my name is Saloni. I'm a biomedical engineer in New York. And today I'm gonna talk about the technique called active recall that helped me rank within the top three spots of Harvard Medical School and my master's at Cornell University. Obviously some of the most competitive Ivy League colleges in the world. So I'll go over what active recall actually is, why it's effective, how it's shown to improve studying techniques, and how you can actually apply it to memorize or learn whatever you're trying to study in a better and more effective way. All right, so what is active recall? Let's make this super simple and just break the two words up. Now, active recall basically means stimulating your brain to extract key pieces of information that you tried to put into your brain a little while ago. And here's the thing that makes the most difference. After all of these years of graduations, when I'm working a full-time job, the things that I actually studied using the active recall technique, I still remember those things to this very day, which shows and which proves how strong of a tool this is. So I'm just gonna take real life examples of myself and we'll go over a couple things of what active recall uh, did for me. Right, so there are studies dating back to a hundred years old that prove that the active recall method is better than other methods out there in terms of memorization. And while I was going through these bucket loads of research studies for this video, there was this one statement by Aristotle that really caught my attention. And he said that exercise in repeated recalling a thing strengthens the memory. And if you think about it, this is the perfect example because the brain, like every other muscle in our body, is at the end of the day, a muscle. And if you think about it, the active recall technique is basically the perfect workout for your brain. The more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. So let's take a look at a research study that was done in 1939. I know, right, that's almost a century ago, but that's my point. So more than a thousand students, all fifth graders, were tested on a certain piece of information about the West Indies, and they had two tests. One test that was a day later of them, of them studying, and another main test that was a week later. And it was shown that when the same set of students had a practice test before the week later main test, they performed 10 to 15% better than those who didn't. Now you must be thinking that, you know, maybe these kids had a high IQ or, you know, they were like super smart or something, but that's not it. The, the thousand kids that were chosen were from a broad spectrum of one third of the top of the class and one third of the bottom of the class. And if this isn't enough, there was a more recent study that was done in 2014, where 83 undergraduate students were tested on the same thing. They were asked to study a key piece of information. They were tested on the same day, 18 days later, and then five weeks later on the same piece of information. And yet again, the students who had practice tests in between these three tests tend to perform 10 to 15% better than those who didn't. Now, I don't know about you, but if there was a hack which would increase my grades 10 to 15% in school, I would hands down take it. All right, so now at this point, you must be thinking that, okay, we have gone through studies that prove that this method worked, but what's the science behind it and how does it actually help you perform better? Now, here's the thing. What we try to do when we're studying is we try to highlight and we keep trying to dump more information in our brain. And that's not what we should be practicing. After putting a certain amount of information in the brain, our practice should be in spending time in extracting that pieces of information. And that's what active recall does. Now by doing this, what you're doing is you're changing the semantics of the networks in your brain. Basically, the connections in your brain between the neurons, you're making those 
better by actively creating pathways every time you test yourself. And when you're creating these pathways and when you try to recall these pieces of information, whether it's a week later or months later or even years later, like myself, what I'm doing right now, that connection that's in your brain, it isn't erased, it's still there. All your brain has to do is go back, look for it, and associate that question with the respective answer. All right, now enough of all of this literature talk, let's get down to business and let's talk about how you can actually use the active recall technique in your day-to-day -day life while you're studying. So what this technique actually does is every time you're trying to study a piece of information, you try to read it once. After that, you create all the possible questions that you could associate with that piece of information. Once you're done reading it, you just close your book, you look at those pieces of questions, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to just it can, it can be just in your mind, out loud, or writing it. You're trying to recall those answers to those questions. And you do this up until you get it right and you know the entire answer. So I'm gonna give you an example right here. When I was in grad school, I had this uh, chapter on biomaterials and tissue engineering. And I asked myself loads of questions and I found the Word document where I had all of these questions listed. And as you can see, there are like basic questions here all the way from cell therapy to inference-based questions like why do we need to keep cells in incubators and just for this one topic of tissue engineering I have 46 associated questions and that's just insane the interesting part is most of these questions I can easily correlate to real life now and you know at the time it's very simple and easy to get distracted in high school thinking to yourself that you know I'm not I'm never gonna use like principles or Archimedes principle of physics in real life am I right but the thing is every time you make a question and try to answer it you're more receptive to associating that question and that application in real life so that's another way that your brain kind of you know comprehends and understands and relates things to just not theoretical book knowledge, but actually practical hands-on learning. So the point here is that when you try to read and mug up everything, like chapters endlessly, I know that can work. I have done it and I'm not gonna lie. It'll be good for that one exam, but what are you really doing for yourself? You're not really learning anything out of that. You'll probably retain that information for a day, a week at the most, and then poof, it's just gonna go away. That's not the whole point of studying you want to be able to associate a certain problem uh, with a certain answer and that's exactly what active recall does for you how can you actually practice active recall and how can you do it for yourself so there's this popular method called cornell note taking and this is free on an app or the website notion if you aren't familiar with that um, i'll put a link to that in the description box below if you want to guys want to check it out if you're a student you get to make a free account even so definitely take advantage of that I'm not affiliated with them in any way, so I'm not being paid to say this. I just personally love Notion. I've been using it for years now, and it's just the most organized way to be productive in whatever you're studying. But basically, what you can do in the Cornell note-taking app is you make questions for yourself, something like flashcards, if you want to say, and then you answer them by covering the topic that you're trying to study. Now, this way, you're actively recalling key pieces of information, and those same questions can be used in revision when you're actually trying to study for the exam the day of or the day before. And you know, you may not get lucky all the time, but if you are, those same questions that you made for yourself might even end up coming in the exam. All right, now before we end this video, I want to add some bonus uh, you know, secret here, <laughs> secret sauce in this video. I know that, you know, talking about active recall, another thing that it does, and it actually did for me, um, is unconsciously, when you're trying to study for hours at end, you don't, we don't realize, but after a certain point, it may be an hour or two or three for some people, we start getting sluggish. I know that you're sitting at your desk, but you're really, there's nothing going inside your brain. Your productivity, your real productivity actually goes down the drain, right? So you're just basically gonna go like that and then it's gonna go down sometime or another. Now, how can you make sure that when you're at that top state of productivity, you don't wanna droop to the very bottom? And Active Recall actually helps in that way because when you're actually done with a certain section of your chapter or the subject that you're studying, 
when you're creating questions, it's like taking a break in between from actually studying and pouring information in your brain. So you're switching your brain from like putting information, extracting information, putting information, extracting information. And those breaks in between give your brain time to reboot, refresh, and even if you wanna like get up, get a snack in between like every 30 minutes, it doesn't have to be you going on TikTok or Instagram or you know burning your eyes out watching a movie or an episode of Grey's Anatomy. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I literally just mean go to the kitchen, get yourself some candy, get yourself some blue lays if, you, if you're into that kind of thing. I know I am. Um, but it just gives your brain and your eyes even that change of pace, scenery, and just a, a reset overall. And that really boosts your productivity. So that was another thing that I noticed when I was studying. And I think that this is going to really help you guys. If it does, leave them in the comments below. Tell me how this whole technique has helped you. I would love to know. And if there's anything that I missed in this video, feel free to drop that in the comment below. But I'll leave a link to Notion and all the articles that I've referenced in this video in the description box below if you guys, if you guys want to check that out. But until then, uh, stay safe, study well, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh yeah, and one other thing I almost forgot, like another thing that will increase your productivity is subscribing to the Crazy Medusa YouTube channel because apparently she puts out like absolutely fantastic content once a week about helping students study better and motivate them and all that stuff. So that's like 10% increase in productivity right there. So subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.